G'day guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing a few different things on the patrol. I've got a lot of fabrication to do. So basically I've got my rear long arms from Superior to put in. I've got front diff bracing, rear diff bracing. I've got a notch for the cross member for the tail shaft. And um, also I'll be shimming up the rear LSD and then welding up the front diff for now. So, I've got to take the car over to my missus house, pull the whole car apart, have it pretty much sitting on the um, jack stands, and then I'll be taking it to my mate's shop to prep the diffs, diffs up and everything and get it ready to go. All right, so at the missus place now, parked out the front, got all the tools I need there, socket set, got four jack stands, some flappy disc, wire wheel, some markers, orbital sandy pads, there's the long arms, all the diff bracing, sander, shim, notch, got some batteries and tools, obviously the jack, and then there the arms for the long arms, so gonna get stuck into it, I'll jack the car up, pull the wheels off, get the car on the stands, and hopefully I've got enough room to sort of lower the diffs without them hitting on the concrete, but we'll see how we go. So for no particular reason, I've just decided I'm gonna start on the rear. So I'll put that under the diff, jack it up as high as I can get it, put the jack stands under, pull the wheels off, and then I'll lower the diff out and start pulling off all the control arms, like the lower control arms, um, the upper control arms, undo the shocks, the coils. I've got coil retainers in, and then there's obviously all the brake lines and stuff like that. So there's a fair bit to do. Um, obviously you've got to pull the axles out before you pull the center out so yeah I'm just gonna get stuck into it so I'll film bits and pieces but most of it's pretty straightforward so I'll only film the important stuff. Righto so it's been a couple hours I've got about an hour or so left to daylight I've got the rear diff housing and center out I'm about to pull that out to fully drain it um, as you can see everything's apart Got the brakes off, all the arms are off, shocks are off, brake lines, all that sort of stuff is just dangling. And I just put all the bolts and stuff back in so I remember where everything goes. I've taken the tail shaft out to do that notch. And now I'm about to move on to the front, repeat everything. And hopefully before it gets too dark, I'll have both the diffs sitting there. So I can pull them into the shed and actually start grinding and prepping them and marking out where all the bracing is going. And then the long arms and that notch I can do tomorrow or the next day while the car's here. Whereas all the diff stuff I want to do in the actual shed. So I'll focus on the diffs and see how we go. Hopefully I can get it done tonight. Alrighty, it is 12 o'clock at night and that was a nightmare. I've got both housings out. About to load them up to take them to the shed. Oh god, so yeah, front one's there, all cleaned out, washed out, front centre, and then that's the rear housing with the rear centre. But yeah, that was a nightmare. Definitely don't recommend doing it unless you get a hoist or a shit ton of jack stands. I've got four jack stands, probably need six, because I was sort of struggling to hold certain things up because all four jack stands are in use at once. Anyway, I made it work, so I'll unpick the camera up tomorrow when I'm at the shed, showing you what I do, getting all ready to brace and stuff. All right, down at Lumpers Shed now. Got the housings here. I've started with the front housing, basically just getting the pieces I need. Say this one. Sitting it in place, centered, and then scribing around the perimeter just with the texture, so I know exactly where to grind off all the paint. So they're all the pieces for the front, and they're the rear. And then I've cleaned up both centers. So yeah, about to start grinding all this back, and then I'll show you once we're starting to weld them on. Rightio, front diff is fully ready to go. I've prepped all the edges on all the pieces. You can see the little gussets for the knuckles. Um, so it's this one. Alright, about to start on the rear diff. Gonna just do the same thing. 
find out which piece goes where, mark it, and then sand it all back, get the paint off. The rear housing's all done. All prepped up, ready to go. Mats over here, doing passes on the front diff. I've just picked up three cans of this stuff here. It's like a black zinc paint. It works really well on steel, so hopefully three should be enough to do both diffs. I'll just do a rough job, I'm not that fussy. All right, I'm sure this video is pretty jumpy. It's been pretty flat out, so hard to record everything, but we've got the front diff back home. I've just bolted the center in, sealed it up, and I've just done the first coat of paint. So it's looking pretty good. I'll do one more coat on that and then I'll start bolting it all in. Got some new diff oil to go in. Um, I'm probably not gonna put it all together because I've just ordered some 25 millimeter bump stop extensions. Um, so I don't wanna bolt it all in with the coils and everything and then pull that back out when they come because I think they're coming tomorrow. So I might just Leave it all bolted in here on the arms um, and the tail shaft, but then I won't put the coils and stuff in just yet. So that's the plan for now. Um, and then obviously we've got the rear diff still at the shed. We just didn't get time to finish that today, but we'll finish that off tomorrow and see how we're going for time. Rightio, so it's the following day. I've got this diff all bolted in Look, just to the arms for now um, Obviously shocks and stuff are still loose. I've put the axles back in all that sort of stuff um, I'm hoping my bump stop spacer kit comes today, so I'll do that before I put the coils in So that's that and then over here I've got the rear diff This is all welded up finished welding this but as you can see here. There's a fair big gap here which is for the pumpkin, but I got the kit without the pumpkin thinking that it was still at least gonna have a nice finish to it, but they've sort of cut corners there by sort of leaving this gap open, which means that's just gonna fill up with shit now. So I'm probably just gonna to have to either order the pumpkin kit and weld that in at a later stage or get some steel and just sort of cut it to this shape and blend it in so it's all closed off because yeah, that's sort of not really a great finish from Superior. But the rest of it's gone pretty good. But yeah, I'm gonna give this a quick little hit with the Y wheel, give it a few coats of paint, and then I'll bolt this one in. Um, the rear bump stops will be getting spaces as well, but they don't require the coils to come out or anything because they're just underneath the chassis. So I can do this whole rear diff, bolt it in, brake lines, all that sort of stuff um, without any issues there. So. I'll do the rear completely, wheels on and everything, and then, yeah, hopefully I get those bumps up spaces so I can finish it off tonight. Brake lines and everything are done up. I just got a notification telling me that bumps up spaces have arrived, so I'll go grab them quickly, bolt them in, get this whole front end tied in, and I can jack her up and get some wheels on, get them off these jack stands before the wind blows it over. Just got back from the post office. These are the spaces I was talking about. They give you some longer bolts and that, so I'll put these in. And then I'll finally be able to put the coils in, get this front end together. That's the spaces installed. Got the coils ready to go back in. Finally. Front is all together now. Wheels are on, all the arms are on. Coils are in. She's looking pretty good. Onto the rear now. Making pretty good progress on the rear. Got the shocks, coils and arms in. Brake lines have been run. I've just got to put the um, drums on and then put the rubber um, line in for the brakes. Then the wheels can go on and we should be right. 
I'll obviously have to bleed the brakes because I've lost a fair bit of fluid. And then I should be right to head off to the shed. Then I'll drop the fuel tank ready for these long arms. Front and the rear is all back together. I've just filled up the rear diff with some fresh oil. I've still got to do the front diff and then we are good to go. Rightio, it's the following day. I'm at Lumper's shed, got the car on the hoist. Ready to do the long arms. So these are the arms here, you get your brackets, crush tubes, template tool there, and then a fresh hole saw. Uh, first step is dropping this sub tank out because you can see where the mount is there, the factory mount. Um, it's gonna move 300 mil forward, but you've got to drill through the chassis from both sides and that fuel tank's obviously in the road to drill from this end. So we'll drop this out for starters and then get ready to drill the new holes. So at the rear end, you've got this bolt here and I think there's a couple down there too. Um, and then obviously you've got to disconnect the hoses that run from up there, those two there. You've just got to disconnect them here and over there. And then at the front, you've got one, and I think there's another one behind these brackets and stuff, so there's not too much to it. And then I'm just gonna use the little stand over there to prop up underneath it and lower it down safely, because they probably weigh a fair bit. Just finished dropping the fuel tank out. Undid all the wiring, all the breathers and the fuel lines. Now you can see you've got heaps of access to that chassis, so. I'll get this completely out of the road so that when we're welding, we don't get it anywhere near the fuel. All right, now that the fuel tank's out of the road, you can see your factory crush tube here. You grab your template from Superior, sit that end over that, like that. You just hold it flush with the bottom of the chassis rail. And then you've got your GU and your GQ mark, and I've already marked it with the texture there. And now you just get your 32 mil hole saw and drill through from this side and then repeat on the other side, but I can't mark out the other side yet because I've still got this bracket here. So I'll put the car off the hoist, cut all this bracket off, obviously remove the factory arm and then I'll be able to drill from the other side and then we just repeat it on the same, same on the other side. Just finished up drilling those holes. So that's this side done, parallel with that and nice and straight, clean cut. Same on this side. So now I'll drop it down, cut these mounts off so I can drill out the other side and prep it for welding. I've pulled out the factory arms. As you can see, they're a lot shorter than these long arms. They're about 300 mil shorter. So what these new long arms help with is things like rear steer. So when you're under travel like this, um, or flexing out, the back wheel tends to pull forward, which causes it to sort of steer with the rear end, um, just making it harder off-road. And if you're doing high speed, like jumping on the dunes and stuff, it can cause the wheel to pull as you land. I've experienced it myself. So when you've got all four wheels off the ground, say these wheels are slightly forward or something, when you hit the ground, they want to straight away move back under compression and it causes the steering wheel to sort of quickly pull to either direction. Um, so they help with that as well as they help with um, travel itself. So you'll get more travel out of them because it's a longer pivot and just better handling overall. So obviously more leverage from the, um, the pivot point. So just a lot more stable off-road. Um, same concept as the front long arm kit that I'll be running, um, which is basically the same thing. They're 300 mil longer which I'll be doing an install video on soon once I get them. So there's a fair few benefits for the price of them. They can't really go wrong uh, because either way, when you get uh, a lift bigger than two inches in the rear, you need to change the, um, the arms in the rear. Usually people just go 20 millimeters longer, which corrects the lift size, but either way you're paying money for them. So you may as well fork out that extra couple hundred dollars and get these long arm kit and um, yeah, get some actual benefits from it. So now that that's done, I'm gonna lower the whole car and cut off these mounts, which is probably gonna be pretty boring and just a lot of grinding. So I'll probably just cut through there around the perimeter, give it a good 10 millimeters of clearance, like leave about five or 10 mil of the steel on 
because I don't want to score into the chassis at all because that's obviously structural and you just don't want to stuff around with the integrity of the chassis. So then I can just grind it back slowly from there. Just thought I'd quickly show you guys this as well. This is the rear tail shaft or drive shaft. As you can see, I've already flipped it because this side, this end is thicker. So I flipped it so that the thinner part sits over this cross member because sometimes that um, it'll hit on here but not there. But because of the travel I've got in the rear, you can see it's already hitting. So what I've done is I've got this little kit from PSR. I think it costs about 50 bucks. They give you this notch and then a template to mark on that cross member, which I'll open up quickly. So this, you just sit on the um, cross member and then that'll give you a cut you gotta do. And this should sit in there perfectly to weld it and that'll give you about 40 millimeters of clearance. So I'll probably do that tonight too while the grinder and the welder is out and everything's out of the road. I'm making a little bit of progress with this mount. I'm sort of just cutting bit by bit. Um, I've just put a little slot in that to bend these out. And now with a fresh blade, I should be able to get up in the inside and cut it out. And then I'll get the flappy disc out and sort of grind it back nice and smooth so it looks factory again. I've just finished cutting all the bracket off. Uh, obviously got a bit of um, grinding back to do with the flappy disc. And then the other thing you have to do is a little notch here. So I just went level with the other side and then just cut up there, which I'll also give a little hit with the flappy disc. But I think that's just because when the new arm goes here under compression, it'll hit there. Um, obviously, because this one's closer to it, it wouldn't hit, but yeah, it just gives you that extra bit of clearance. Um, so yeah, I'll give this all a good hit now and then I'll give it a paint and then I'll mark this um, new hole for this side which should line up with the other side of the chassis and then I'll be able to um, weld those crush tubes on Alright, so this side is fully done All the welds have grinded back and I've given a good coat of paint And then you can see this side I've started grinding back ready to weld You can see the hole all the way through So now I'm going to go to the other side repeat that and then I'll pick the camera back up when we're ready to weld these um, cross tubes in. Both sides are fully done now and painted where the old mounts were. Drilled this hole out now too. Now I'll just put the car down, move this arm back here so I've got plenty of room to prep this chassis ready for the mount to weld on. We've just prepped up this chassis, got the mount sitting in place, ready to weld. That's the crush tube there. So we'll do a weld on this side here and on the back side, and then we'll weld along the bottom and the top on the inside. Can't get above it, but I'll put some sealant down there. Radio, we've finished up for the night. It's about 1 a.m. We've lowered the car down. We've got both mounts fully welded. So we're just gonna leave this dry overnight and then we'll come back in the morning, give it a good prime and paint, and then we should be right to put the arms in. So I'm pretty happy with this. Matt's a really good welder, so he's got some nice passes on there. I just don't trust my welds yet, just um, with something like this, it's actually to do with the suspension and that, when it's done properly, so that's that side. 
and I'll show you this side quickly. So that's it. Obviously, the old ones were back here. So pretty big difference. Plenty of clearance with those body mounts with the checkout. Ready to go for the morning. So I'll come back here early tomorrow, pick up the camera and we'll get these bad boys in and I'll um, go for a test drive and show you sort of what they look like and how they perform. Rightio, next day, got the car back up on the hoist and I've just finished pulling out the drive shaft. Got it sitting down there because I'm gonna do this notch. So I'll mark it out, cut it out with the grinder and then I'll prep it up ready to weld so I can paint that and this side all at once. All right, so this is the template here. I've marked it out here. Those holes there and there, just line up with that hole there and there. So now I'll cut it out with the grinder. Just finished doing the notch. Now that'll just sit in like that. So I'll prep up the surfaces, getting ready to weld. And as you can see, get about 30 millimeters of clearance. Rightio, so the notch has been fully welded. Now I'm just gonna give it a quick hit with the primer and then do a couple coats of paint on that and the two new mounts and then I'll bolt everything back together. Drive shaft is back in and you can see now on full drop, still got plenty of clearance there. So full down travel, plenty of clearance, which is good. So now I'm ready to bolt in the long arms. Fuel tank is in, everything's plumbed back in, all the lines and all the wiring, so should be right to lower it down and finally bolt these back mounts in for the long arm. And then that should pretty much finish this up. Rightio, car's finally back down on the ground under its own weight. Arms are in, all bolted up. That pinion angle's sitting perfect. Everything's looking real nice, so pretty happy and the arms both lined up really easy so they must be pretty parallel um, so yeah I'll go for a quick test drive make sure there's nothing weird going on but alrighty so it's been a couple days since the long arms have been in plenty of driving and they feel great on road and then I took them out to a local spot yesterday just to sort of stretch out the car see how they flexed and see how the rear steer has been fixed and all that. And um, definitely a noticeable difference. Like on full droop, the wheel was still pretty centered and on tuck, it was dead center. So that was good to see. And the rear end was just working a lot easier too. Um, and then yeah, on road definitely feels nicer, cornering hard and stuff like that. So pretty happy with the overall outcome. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. It's probably been a bit jumpy just because we've been so rushed getting everything done between the bracing, um, the shimming of the uh, rear centre, and then obviously the long arms. It's been a pretty big week. So to try and film everything in super detail has been pretty hard. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.